Now, if you were to go and do a ton of research as to what the best headphone system is for $2,000, you might create a system like this. Each individual component has fantastic reviews, which are justified because they're great components. And yet, at the end of it, I'm gonna tell you today why you may have made a mistake, and I'm gonna explain some areas where you could save a lot of cost and get very, very similar performance. Now, I wanna state that I like all of these components individually. They're all great, but it's more about picking the right situations and systems for these to be placed in. And really it's more about playing to the benefit of everything. So this system costs about $2,100 total. It includes Odyssey LCDX, a balanced Oppos flow cable, the A30 Pro and the D30 Pro amp and DAC from Topic. Now, a couple days ago, I've made a video about my personal daily use setup, and that included a topping A90 and a topping D90. And I said that the A30 Pro and the D30 Pro was a good alternative. But what I didn't talk about was exactly how good these things are and how close behind they are for about half the cost. Now, the A30 features a lot of the NFCA DNA that the A90 uses, and they do share a lot of the same sonic characteristics being incredibly clear, neutral, and analytical. The D30, though, does differ a little bit from the D90. Um, the D30 runs a Cirrus quad DAC in it, and the D90 uses a ESS Sabre DAC. Now, as far as the A30 and the D30, those have a very similar chassis. The A30 does have some ventilation holes along the sides, bottom, and top. And I actually do like this because it provides a little bit of visual diversity compared to just a, a typical box. I think it looks nice. Now, the real shocker here is that the A30 sounds identical to the A90. The A90, I think, edges it out a tiny bit, but it's probably placebo just because the price difference and the size difference. It's, it's very, very close. And this begs the question, why would anybody use the A90 then over the A30 Pro? And for most cases, I would say you really shouldn't be using the A90 over the A30 Pro. For me, I need the extra power just for my job comparing you know, very, very efficient and very inefficient headphones. I need as much power diversity and contrast as I can get. And the A90 is just a little bit better at that than the A30 Pro is. I also need the pre-out switch for the physical outputs to my speakers, which the A30 Pro does not have. And on the DAC end, the D90 does have Bluetooth as well as being an incredible well-measuring DAC, one of the best in the world. And uh, I do need Bluetooth to test certain Bluetooth components. But if you don't need those things, the A30 and the D30 for about 750 bucks total is definitely the way to go. It's, it's the one to get. But then we have the headphones and these are the Odyssey LCDX headphones. I've talked pretty much ad nauseum about these headphones lately, so I'll be brief about this. They have a focus and emphasis on bass response, lower mid range, a smooth but detailed top end, but they're not very good with upper mid range for females. They're not as forward as most people would like, including myself. And they're pretty piss poor for sound staging at the price, though they are built really well and are fairly comfortable but on a slightly heavier chassis. Now these headphones have one defining factor that is very unique to them at not only this category of headphones being an open back planer, but also this price range being about $1,200 for the creator package and an additional 150 for the flow cable. And that's the fact that they're incredibly, incredibly efficient. And this creates the rift in this system. See the A30 Pro is a very powerful amplifier. It's about 5.5 watts into 32 ohms and the LCDX is only 20 ohms and has a sound pressure level of 103 dB. So with this system, you can literally keep this in low gain and never even touch the end of the volume knob on the A30. You're just never going to get there on this. It'll be too loud. So what you end up paying for is not using, you know, 80% of the rest of the amplifier's capability. Now there is a little bit of a tear for me because I, I can see some counter examples as to why this is actually a good pairing. One is headroom. I think headroom is a very healthy thing to practice on all of your electronic and physical components. I don't think that you wanna be utilizing 100% capacity of anything, whether it's your car, your phone, your computer, your amp, your DAC, anything at all. I don't think you wanna be utilizing 100% of it all the time. I don't think that's good for device longevity as a kind of a broad suggestion. There are, of course, uh, exceptions. But in this case, I don't think you need this much headroom. Um, I really like to use about 50 to 70% of an amplifier's capability um, and have like 30%. I think that's more than enough headroom, but having 80% headroom, definitely not needed. But there is one more example where I do think this system is recommended, and that's if you have a number of other headphones or you plan to upgrade or change headphones in the future. It's good to have sort of a, a baseline that you can use everything on and not have to worry about changing it or buying another amplifier down the road to 
really work for more demanding headphones. So in that scenario, I do see a benefit to having an overly powered headphone for this headphone system specifically is if you just have more headphones. But as far as this system goes, this is completely overkill and I wanna kind of explain some of the right tools for the job that may fit a little bit better and save you some cost and some areas where you could swap out equipment to make this make a little more sense. Now let's say you wanted to swap out the headphones instead of the amplifier and the DAC because this amplifier and DAC are legit, like some of the best amplifiers and DACs you can get for $750 total. Uh, they both perform at the top of their class uh, in their price range. I would suggest spending a little bit more money and getting something like this, which is a Heifman Aria. Now this headphone is very demanding, but it's got a couple sonic requirements as well, at least in terms of uh, my preferences and opinion about this headphone. It needs a lot more power than people think. Uh, if you underpower this thing, you might get volume out of it that is loud, but you'll be dealing with kind of a shrill, thin version of the sound and it won't be as fulfilled as it really can sound. Now on top of that power requirement, I think that this sounds best when it's matched with a powerful, but more importantly, clean and neutral amplifier and DAC, which is exactly what the A30 Pro and the D30 Pro are. So with that over cheaper, not as good sounding amplification, you're gonna get a much more filled out and fulfilled, just fuller sound out of this. You're also gonna be filling out some of the gaps that the LCDX has, but you'll also make a couple trade-offs in the other direction. Some of the benefits of the X are much more filled out upper mid-range, maybe even a little bit too filled out, but it's still a lot more present than on the X. So if you listen to a lot of female vocals, this is probably gonna sound better. It's also got God tier sound staging. This is probably one of the best headphones you can get for sound staging, short of something like an HD 800S, but this has better depth and forward imaging, in my opinion, than the 800S does. It's also got a lot better verticality for sound than the 800S. But the trade-offs you'll be making is the X has better bass response and better build. This is a primarily plastic chassis and it's, it's built well, but it's not quite to the standard of the X but this paired with the topping system, you'll really be able to take advantage of this headphone and the amplifier and the DAC with headroom for everything and everything kind of complements one another. So I think this is a very complete system, though it does cost about $400 extra. Now, instead of switching headphones, let's say you switch the amplifier and the DAC. I wanna give you two options that I think are going to be the cheapest option to get the most amount of sound and the best option while not spending any extra money than you have to. The cheapest option is gonna be a full of four. It's not a particularly powerful DAC and amp, but it is a very succinct and small all-in-one unit that functions really well and sounds pretty good and actually leans a little bit on the warmer side, but for a $109 DAC and amp system, that's totally okay. Now it's going to power this headphone just fine, but you're not gonna have a ton of extra headroom for other headphones down the road. So if you decide to you know, pick up some Mod House Argons, for example, that headphone will want some extra power. So just be aware of power requirement potentials for the future. Now the best amplifier and DAC, I think for the money is going to be the topping A50S and the D50S. Now I think a lot of people might expect me to pick the Modius and the Magnius because that's slightly cheaper, but I actually like the A50S and the D50S better with the stack. One, because it's a little bit smaller. It's a very small, but well-built, uh, collection. And I actually like the sound signatures of those better being a little bit cleaner. And I think that this headphone really enjoys just ultimate cleanliness. That's what I really like with this headphone. Now that stack produces about 3.3 watts into 32 ohms rather than the 5.5 of the A30. But that's still like a, an absolute ton of headroom. Even for most headphones, that's going to be just fine. It also features a 4.4 millimeter balance output. This has an XLR, but these Oppos cables actually do come in a 4.4 millimeter version. So instead of the XLR, I would recommend that one. And that system together is, I think, maximizing the capability of the headphone with uh, some added you know, headroom for the amplifier and the DAC and has just incredible sound quality. In fact, that also shares some of the NFCA tech that's in the A30 Pro and the D30 Pro and the sound signature replicates those. They're all very similar in sound. They all sound very close. And from a pricing perspective, that's very, very appealing, especially on the lower end, especially if you don't need the power or the flexibility of the options of something like the A90. Now I think the main point of this is that when you're looking at a whole system, you wanna analyze as a whole system so that you're not you know, overspending for just slightly better specs, even though you don't need them. All right guys, thanks all for watching. Till the next video, my name's Josh, signing off.